Very strong stuff from Michael Dignan and it's had a huge response over the last few days. Everybody's essentially talking about what he said and uh, to be honest when I listen to it you really feel like it's the beginning of a manifesto for somebody who should be president of the GA. and we, we've put that up on the app on otbsports.com as well if you want to have a, a read through of the rest of it because there's loads of stuff in there and uh, anyway to continue this conversation now I'm delighted to say we have the dairy manager Rory Gallagher with us. Rory good morning to you, how are you doing? Morning, Chair. How's it going? Look, very strong words, obviously, from Michael Dignan that kind of frames a conversation for us. I'm interested to hear from your point of view what it's like to be in a county that has very been very high profile in saying we are absolutely going to stick to these regulations because we believe that the, the club game is so important that the inter-county players actually get an opportunity to play with their clubs. What's that whole process been like for you? Uh, look, Chair, I think, you know, the, you know since the, the outbreak of the virus and the reality that... Uh, it was going to be a different type of year from everybody, you know. Um, you know, myself and uh, you, Stephen Barker, the chairman, and Kieran McKeever, the vice chairman, would have had several different conversations about the way forward. And I think from very early on, it was it was very clear there had to be a serious bit of compromise for everybody. Club players are getting less games than they'd normally get. County teams are getting less training, but we're all very grateful to be getting the opportunity number one to get playing. Uh, both club and county and uh, I think it was very very clear guidelines there was an 11 week program um, or sorry 11 weeks you know issued from Croke Park to play club football and hurling and I think Derry ha have been very proactive on it they have produced something that accommodates a dual county in the sense I think there's seven or eight clubs play senior hurling as well and they've every right to use up every one of those weekends and I have no issue with it whatsoever Does it make your job more difficult? I tell you, well, the first thing I'm going to say, I'm not going to come on here and, you know, because obviously Derry have made their I've made plenty of mistakes. It's my ninth year going into uh, being involved with inter county teams, and I've made mistakes with players, with the club and county situation. So I have, you know, and I will say, I find you know, county players want to be at club training when club training's on, and they, they as much as anything, want clarity. And they would love it to come in very clear guidance from Croke Park. And if not, they want it from a county, the county management. Then the, the county players playing for the clubs, they do not want to be compromised. They don't want to be letting their club team down. And maybe at times, you know, you know, and I go back maybe in some type periods when involved with Donegal, we compromise the players. And that's very unfair in a player. And I think um, you know, what Derry have done is very, very clear cut. And even since Stephen Barger's interview, they've brought the county final forward a week. So you've got to look at it realistically. In a normal situation, we'd be playing a first round of the Challenger match, say, on the 20th of May. We would have a 13-day rule. This year, the Derry County final is on the 3rd of October, as far as I know. We won't be playing Championship to a minimum 28 days later. That's four weeks of exclusive period where we have uninterrupted access to the players. Bear in mind, most, most of the, the teams will be out of the Championship a week, two, three weeks prior to that. You're going to have the bulk of your squad. It's actually very workable, and I personally have no issue with it. Right, that, look, that's really interesting. First off, to hear you say that you've made mistakes in the past, because we, we tend to get a picture painted of inter-county managers. Um, the, the language around them is always macho, oh, they're ruthless, they, you know, they don't care about clubs, they never change, and they certainly don't evolve to, to look back and go, actually, maybe that was wrong, and maybe there's a better way here. So can you talk to us about when you realised that compromising the players in Donegal was actually the wrong thing to do, what, what was the, the bit where you kind of saw the light on that? Uh, I, th I think, you know, over time you learn, you know, probably when we got involved with Donegal, and you know, um, Donegal got a lot of criticism over it, and, and probably J Jim, when he was managed, he did. To be fair to Jim again at the time, I thought there was, uh, the, 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 the fixtures made it very difficult to prepare the county team. That was, they were playing challenge games over different weekends, so you had to make a certain stand, and that stand was made then. But then I got to a stage when it was starting to impact club league and one thing or another, and, you know, I suppose I can remember a period in 2017 where we were getting ready to, to play through own, it might have been two weeks later, and I kind of, there was maybe 15, 16 players relatively cocooned that were probably going to start, and a couple of players decided to train themselves, wanted to train any. I should have made a decision that day. There was club fixtures that evening and the next day. Some of them played. Some of them then weren't able to play in local derbies. And I felt that was the wrong thing for me. I was um, more experienced, more mature than them. I should have made a decision for those players. No, you are playing club games this evening. That's it. So it is, you know. And you learn from it. You know, you're, they're, letting, they're letting their teammates down emotionally. It wasn't good for them. They were struggling to deal with not being in the team, number one. And then emotionally, they were struggling with letting their own club, the mates and community down as well, you know. So you kind of learn over time. But I do think fixtures have got a lot better. 
Um, Jer, I do think it's wrong to put all county managers in that. Um, I know a lot of them are very reasonable. Put it this way, I know in Donegal at the minute, the boys, I'm involved here, we live in Killybegs and Hugh Fadden and, and Owen Bann are up at club training. I know from talking to Ricey and from Anna, uh, Banty and Monan, club, the, the, the county players are all training with, with their clubs at the minute. So I think it's wrong that this perception that county managers, number one, county managers are club people as well and enjoy going to club games. So it's not everybody's like that. Yeah, in fairness, it's the point Kieran Shannon makes today in the examiner that he knows that the, the Clare managers in hurling and football aren't uh, having their players together for training sessions. They're all playing, they're all club, the intercounty players are all training with, uh, with their clubs. Yeah. And that seems to be the case in a lot of places. It's the few counties that are actually breaking the rules here. And it seems to be not that many counties breaking the rules that it would actually be easy enough to punish them and to lay down a law and say, actually, you know what, the right thing to do is here is to be very ruthless about this as, a, as an organisation and say, club players are playing with their club, there's a window here, it's a club window. When that's over, most counties are going to have a minimum of two and probably four weeks before they get back into inter-county action, and that's fine in a shortened season when there's been a global pandemic. Yeah, and I, I actually agree, but I suppose you're right, that it, is, it is a few and there's a lot of stories about a few, but I think this is, uh, I think if... Croke Park or the, whoever makes the decision up there two years ago to my knowledge the first year of club only month of April and I know I was involved in, in managing for Manor and there was teams going on training camps in April there was teams going on um, abroad to train and there was minimal sanctions and I think that there has led people to believe there'll be a lot of huff and puff and if we bend the rules we get away with it and that's where I would disappointed because I, I have a responsibility yes it's up to Derry County Board to run their affairs or whatever county boards run their affairs. But the, the players um, in the Derry Senior Panel, they want to not be, not be at a disadvantage either. And it's, you've got to get across them, relax, we're confident in what we're doing and we're OK. Because they hear the stories of other teams training as well. The other thing I think that, that's crazy as well, Jared, to be brutally honest, if there was no pandemic or nothing, we're still 14, 15, 16 weeks away from playing in championship. I don't see the real relevance of training at this point in time, particularly when they have to go back and focus on clubs. I think players are injury-free at the minute. I think players have rehabbed really well. I think they're in as good a condition ready for training. So I honestly don't see the sense in training in the month of July, to be honest. Rory, on that point you make about getting across to the players of maybe not stressing about what other counties are doing, how, how do you get that balance? Because on the one hand, you say... They want to be there with their clubs and they don't want to miss club training and the guilt that goes with that. And, and particularly coming out of the period we've been through, they probably want to be around their community and want to be around their mates. But also, on the first week of November, they're in all likelihood going to be live on television against Armagh in a game of huge, huge interest. And if they're looking around and county players talk and they're hearing that another county is doing stuff a couple of months early, they, they don't want to be at that disadvantage. So do you feel that you might be under a little bit of pressure? Like, Have you been under pressure from certain players who actually do want to return to training a little bit earlier? Uh, no, I haven't felt that, but I've been very clear to them that we believe in what we're doing is right. You know, again, I, I have a lot of experience here, nine years in the, in the coaching this level. You've made mistakes, you've probably trained pre-season too early. It's a wee bit different pre-season, you're getting people in shape, you may be bringing in new players. I've been saying, you know, I've been making, being very clear to them. We're very comfortable with your level of fitness. We're not going to get make massive inroads in fitness. You can still focus on your your strength, your gym work, your rehab from injury, that sort of thing. We, we are going to go out and meet them in small groups. There won't be collective training. We're just going to relay to them what we intend doing when we get back, and then how we move forward into this season and the next season. And you know, they, the players have got to trust the management in the back, and they've been thankfully, you know, the, the, the guys with me, Kieran, Mina, and Emily, we're all on the one wavelength as well. And there, there's none of them saying to, to me or the what we feel we need to be at this. Plus, there, there's a huge reward for players playing in, in, in club championship. Yes, you can talk about the competitiveness. They love the feel good of going out and representing their community. They absolutely love coming back, back having played well. And you know, the, we, the bottom line is we still have loads of time. We have four weeks minimum of exclusive period to get ready for, for championship. You, know, you normally get maximum 13 days, sometimes 20 if you're lucky. We're still in a very privileged position, number one, to be playing and to be afforded that time. Do you recognise yourself when um, the caricature of the inter-county manager who is ruining the life of the club player, um, when, that, when that caricature gets put out there? Uh, I'd be disappointed in it. I, I do think a healthier balance is struck. I know there has been some you know, difficult stories, so there is. But uh, and, and, well, you ask me, I, I think it could get a lot better. 
I think you've uh, there's a lot of people out to Crook Park. What's wrong? What's wrong with provincial council? What's long, wrong with Ulster getting together and saying we're going to streamline our fixtures? We're going to you know, rid ourselves, trial it for two years. That these are the, the weekends we're going to play club games, club league. County players have to play in them. These are the weekends that are going to be free. Let everybody have that because everybody's in a competition with each other. But at the same time, there has to be fairness to everybody, and that's that's the big thing. People probably feel it's unfair if some counties are getting away with it, and you do feel a wee bit of that. But I think that provincial councils, there's a lot of people in paid roads in provincial councils. Why not? Why don't do they get together? Bring in um, club club managers, bring in um, county chairman, county secretaries, or the people that make the fiction in each county, and that, let's come to some sort of unity in each county or in each province at the very start and try to take it forward from there. Because I, I, while county managers and including myself, we've all made mistakes. There's no doubt about that. We would all like clarity and an even playing field. I think it. I think everybody understands that um, in a, a, an amateur sport like this, where people are, are giving up free time while they're also trying to hold down a job and a family life, that there will be mistakes made. But it's the willingness to be open about those mistakes. And I think actually, you saying that we've made this mistake in the past is a very powerful agent of change because there are probably other managers who don't have as much experience or who are a little less self-assured who are repeating those mistakes. And if we start having these conversations now, for me, that's the big thing here, is that there's an opportunity across all of Irish life for us to look at what's happened over the last couple of months and try and take some of the, the opportunities that are there to change the future, as opposed to just continually doing the stuff that we've always done. And Yeah, 100%. Like, even in, in this lockdown, I realised the mistakes we made with regards to strength and conditioning. People travelling, sometimes at, at hours that are unsustainable, whether it's morning, evening, you know, to to come and do do strength, gym work, whatever. So it is where that can be done. You know, from travelling around Derry, you know, in the the facilities with gyms. One thing a lot of boys have them at their own houses now as well. That can be done, and we can make life easier for them. And I also want to get across: there's nothing wrong with county players wanting to be at an elite level. I think maybe they get harshly treated and management. There's nothing wrong with being a good club person, good club man, and also wanting to be elite level sportsman. And that's what a lot of county players were. They're very very driven. There's nothing wrong with them wanting to train four, five, six, ten times a week if that's their lifestyle choice, you know. And I, 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 in my experience, there's very few county players don't want to do that. You know, I know there's people come out and say I'm glad to come out of the bubble and probably and we've all enjoyed this time to relax and reflect. But if we could come up with a better, more efficient way of working that allows the players and us all to be at the elite level, but also to have a wee bit more freedom of time as well, I think that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, you could do your collective gym sessions on Zoom where people are doing it from their gaff as opposed to travelling an hour to be in the same gym as each other. You know, and maybe once a week they all meet up as opposed to three times a week. And all of a sudden, their, yeah. life, their work-life balance is restored a little bit. 100%. And not only that, it, it, what I'm finding is most of these county players now are so into it themselves. They're almost self-taught. They'll take the instructions in occasional meetups with coaches and they can follow them themselves. You know, um, I think that they're so driven to want to get the best out of themselves with nutrition, with regards to recovery, with regards to strength work. And then they bring that back to their clubs as well. And everybody's a winner out of it, Jerry. You know, but I, I, don't think, um, I don't think county managers everywhere are as bad I think that we've all made mistakes, but I do think if it was streamlined and there was really, really strong, I agree with Michael, if there's really strong leadership, it would make it easier for everybody. But there's nothing wrong at the same time. Everybody's got their own mind. We had to make a decision. Derry County Board had to make a decision. Was they felt was right? We as management have to make a decision. And once we're, 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 we're happy with that and true to ourselves, we can move on, you know? Yeah, it seems like there's really good alignment between you and the, the Derry County Board. Can I ask for your opinion generally on the level of leadership that we've had at the moment and, and where the leadership is taking the direction of the GAA? Look, I, I think people are too, you know, obviously people are too quick to criticise. I think it is moving along. I have to say fixtures have got an awful lot better, so they have. Um, I think they're more streamlined. Um, could it get better? Absolutely. I think club leagues, probably, you know, if I look at the club league here, say in Donegal, it's probably been devalued a wee bit over the last number of years, and I've been a part of that, but county players not playing enough games. I think, you know, if I look at Monon, Monon's a county people give great success to, and rightly so. And there seems to be phenomenal harmony in it over the last seven, eight, nine years. Yet, and they they tried something there where um, they play uh, league fixtures and games with county players are awarded three, four points. They're innovative. They're trying to work a solution that sorts clubs, counties, and you know I think the Derry chairman used the word there. You need a shared vision. You know you need you need a situation with the county management, the players, 
and obviously everyone in the clubs are are happy with the general direction that's going. And you know, I have to give Derry credit there. You know, even you know before getting involved doing the research, Stephen Barkins, the chairman, he had he had been involved at fixtures for a number of years and the trial different things because people have to try something, you know, to find out is it better than what was there before. And they seem to have come up with something that can work for everybody. Yeah. One last question for you. Um, obviously, you're involved with Killy Beggs uh, at a, a coaching level, I think, as well. So that must be good crack at the moment having everybody available for the club in advance of what's going to be a, a short but a, a, a nice burst together. Yeah, listen, um, short year, yeah, but uh, like last Wednesday, can back up, the, it's called Centre of the Local Pitch. Um, it was like a load of people winning the lotto, you know, the, the enjoyment of being about. And, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely, there's no doubt about it, having Owen Ban and, and Huey McFadden um, up at training. It's uplifting. It's, it lifts everybody. It lifts the people in. Um, helping out, you know, bring bringing the gear, all that. It's just something to really look forward to. And I think, in fairness, to Donegal, they've come up with a really innovative way as well. It's different than Derry's. They've come up with a regional league situation, situation where there's three games, I think, with the county players coming up to uh, club championship. And then every club, every club's guaranteed four championship matches with probably 75% of them going to get five. And I think it's something to really look forward to. I think they're going to continue the regional league then without the county players. So club players get another four games. So I think there's a lot of good work being done as well, Jerry. you know, that maybe doesn't get reported as, as easily. Yeah, great stuff. Rory, always great to talk to you. Thanks a million. Best of luck with the rest of the season. Cheers, Jerry. That's Rory Gallagher there, obviously involved with uh, his local club in Killy Beggs, but of course uh, speaking to us there as the dairy manager as well. Really interesting stuff and I think that whole notion of uh, people being able to learn from past mistakes, Nathan, is something that we could all take into our day-to-day -day lives. <laughs> Don't be pointing fingers at me, Chair. I've taken a lot of that out of the last three months, you know, and going to continue it for a long time to come. I thought he was brilliant there and it's, it's that, he can see both sides of the coin, obviously, being that club manager in Killy Beggs and Part of this is trusting club managers and educating club managers so that there isn't seen as this wide gap between when a player goes back to the club and what might happen to them at club training compared to the elite level of inter-county training. And it was interesting, I was chatting to a couple of lads from Mayo over the last couple of days, and they were saying that the senior management team in Mayo held a webinar last week for all the club managers. So they had James Horan, did all the strength and conditioning officers there to basically give a little bit of advice of, well, here's what you can do, here's what we do, and here's what might translate well for club players, not just to do with the county players and looking after the 30, 40 players of a senior county squad, of actually saying, well, you know, we have all this knowledge, we have all the resources, why not share them out with the club managers as well so that when our players go back, that they are protected and they are, that there isn't that big a dip, there isn't that big a gap in the quality of coaching. Yeah, look, again, that that is exactly the type of stuff that you want to hear about. These are the opportunities that this uh, massive uh, acceleration in the pace of, of people using video conferencing software is, is going to open up those huge opportunities for various clubs, various sports, like right across the board. So it's great to hear that. Um, right. Well, I'd be fascinated to hear from James Oren in the next couple of months as to what Rory touched on and how they have changed because we've heard so often as how Mayo struggle with the amount of travel the players have to make. Well, do they need to travel as much now? Can they have their Zoom training sessions? Is there a realisation that, you know what, we don't need to be dragging them halfway across the country three times a week? Yeah, I mean, if 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 there was like proper, I don't know if you know this, but well, um, there's there's no broadband in Mayo because we've no ministers. Jair is the problem. I don't know if you know that. What did Michael Ring do? What was Enda What was Enda doing for the last? That's uh, in the past. Two That's in the past. I mean, you, you know, we you, need you new basically had the entire government stuff. for a decade there, Nathan. What happened there? We what what did Porrick Flynn do for you? What did Beverly What did Beverly Cooper it, Flynn do for you? Try it sometime. Try it sometime. That's right. I tell you. Uh, 56 minutes past eight this morning. In light of a positive COVID-19 case in Kilkenny GA, Dr. Kevin Moran who's on the GA Advisory Committee is going to join us next to chat through what happens in your club if a teammate shows symptoms of COVID-19.